Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Kevin, and welcome to my little corner of the universe. Today, we're talking something that's very near and dear to my heart. That's first contact. Signal confirmed. We are not alone in the universe. Time they have the technology to come here. They have the technology to do anything. Whoever these beings are, they are light years more advanced. But they're not light years away. So I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but a few months ago, the US military came out and released video footage from their Air Force and Naval pilots that were recording UFOs with their tracking cameras. Now this was broadcast all over the television. I remember it very clearly watching on Fox News. As a matter of fact, we'll be watching the clip here real quick. But I want you to think about the implications that brings up. If the United States government is showing us videos of unidentified flying objects that they can't identify and that are outperforming our fifth generation jets, it goes, what, Mach 5, Mach 6? It's one of, the most advanced, one of the most advanced fighters on the planet, the F-22. And these vehicles outperform them. Let's watch Dr. Carlson and hear what he has to say. This video, it shows two Navy pilots encountering something bizarre off the east coast of the United States. Watch this. <laughs> Okay, these are guys who fly for a living, who know what other airplanes look like, including those maintained by foreign governments, and they're totally shocked by this. This is one among many incidents like it, including many that have happened in the middle of the day to sober people, lots of independent witnesses at the same event, in commercial pilots, military pilots, O'Hare Airport in the afternoon. None of them have obvious explanations. These are aircraft, apparently, that are moving in ways that appear to violate physics, that are flying very differently from any aircraft ever observed, and way faster than any plane that we know any foreign country has. So like I said, the implications are real. Did you hear what Tucker just said? That the United States government is saying that they are def de defying the laws of physics. That they can't explain it, that they're moving much faster than our aircraft are, and that it's got them completely worried. If I was a leader of a nation, I would be completely worried as well with aircraft from another world entering my airspace and with me being powerless to do nothing about it. So in natural response, the U.S. government jumped right on top of this and started a 21st century version of Blue Book. If you don't know what Blue Book is, Blue Book is... Uh, was the Navy's first attempt to try to quiet the public and ease their tensions about UFOs and alien crafts. It was led by J. Allen Hynek. If you don't know who J. Uh, J. Allen Hynek is, we'll do a little bit of a video on him later on in the history of ufology. But to give you a little brief synopsis of J. Allen Hynek, he was neither a believer nor a skeptic. He was the middle of the road for both sides and helped flourish and move the movement of the ufology community further than what it is. So if you ask me, well, don't ask me. Let's watch the next clip, and then I'll ask you after the next clip. Here we go. Some crazy news dumped on Friday evening from the Pentagon in a statement that seemingly came out of nowhere and yet was clearly designed in order not to bring a lot of attention to it. The Pentagon announcing that they are going to be starting a task force to investigate UFOs. So this statement comes from the Pentagon spokesperson Susan Goh. She says the Department of Defense established, this is classic Pentagon speak, the UAPTF <laughs> to improve its understanding of and gain insight into the nature and origins of UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. The mission of the task force is to detect, analyze, catalog UAPs that could potentially pose a threat to U.S. national security. Hmm. So pretty big deal here that it came, and again, it came out on a Friday evening news dump, kind of a classic 
here in Washington. And the thing, Crystal, this is being pushed by the Pentagon official who actually resigned in 2017 over what he said were efforts to cover this up, saying this is precisely the intended result of what we were trying to achieve in the task force that he was do uh, doing at the time. Right. And ultimately, which led to the publication of the videos and the investigations and all that in the New York Times. So it's a story that just seems to like tick on beneath the radar slowly, but some of us are paying attention. Well so we just watched the news clip from the Hill news station where they were talking about the Pentagon starting up a new Project Blue Book. And they did it on a Friday, a news dump, which meant they wanted to be very quiet about this, but they had to make it public. They had to make it public, but they wanted to be quiet about it. Why did they have to make it public? Because of 2020. In today's society... Well, I'll give, you a, I'll give you a perfect perspective. When I was a teenager in the 1990s, 1980s, well, I wasn't a teenager in the 80s, but when I was a kid in the 80s and a teenager in the 90s, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have, well, we had cell phones, but not really, specific, not really technologically advanced cell phones or the advanced cell phones we have today. Let's go with that. We had flip phones and we didn't have cameras in them. We didn't start getting cameras and phones until the late 90s. However, in today's society, with everybody having a phone with a camera that can produce HD quality pictures the same as a movie camera, they can't hide anymore. They can't hide the fact that we're all seeing something, that we're all noticing something, that we're all looking towards the sky, and we're recording everything. That's why we have platforms like YouTube, BitChute, Reddit, all these other social media sites where we can Facebook, where we can share and download the information that we just saw, what we just witnessed, and disseminate it to everybody. So it's like a double-edged sword. The government wants all the information, they want to contain all the information, but when the people also have access to all that information and they can share it at a moment's notice, you can't hide too well in the shadows anymore because everybody has cameras with lights on them. Which leads me to my next point. The US Pentagon is telling everybody that they have off-world vehicles in their possession. Do you understand that that is even more of a bombshell? Right now, everybody's mind should be blowing up, just like this guy. So, with world, with off-world technology and off-world vehicles, that means that the U.S. government obtained them in three ways, and only three ways. And we'll talk about those three ways, three ways, right after this next clip. This is a Fox News alert. There are new findings tonight in the search for extraterrestrial life. The New York Times reporting that a secretive Pentagon unit tasked with investigating UFO sightings is quite likely releasing some of its findings soon. And those findings could be stunning, particularly for people who have doubted the existence. The Pentagon has been conducting classified hearings on UFOs for more than a decade. We know very little about what they've found, but apparently just recovered are off-world vehicles not made on this earth. That's a direct quote. We're not exactly sure what they mean by that, but some of it's self-evident. So it's a big story, and we are scouring through the reporting on it right now. We'll bring you much more right here tomorrow night. So you just saw from a very reliable source, Tucker Carlson, on Fox News, telling you that the Pentagon has told the public that they have off-world vehicles in their possession. That is crazy. So here are the three questions, well, excuse me, here are the three ways the U.S. government could have obtained them that I could think of. One, we negotiated for them. 
And if we negotiate it for them, then we've been negotiating for a while. And if we've been negotiating for a while, then that blows up all of Roswell and every other alien conspiracy theory out there, doesn't it? Number two, the second reason, or the second way we obtained the, the vehicles, we shot them down. If we shot them down, that's huge. That is even more mind-blowing than just obtaining them through negotiations. If we shot them down, that means we're causing incidences with interstellar beings that are going to come back looking for Fred and Tom because Fred and Tom's ships were shot down and they can't find Fred and Tom anymore. And if they shot them down in a combat scenario, then they probably had Fred and Tom locked up somewhere in like an Area 51, Area 52, or some other undisclosed location where hundreds of scientists are being brought in to examine them, talk to them, linguists, xenobiologists, anybody and everybody who has a degree in ology or physiology or any type of sociology, psychology, anybody who has a degree is probably talking to Fred and Tom. Sorry if I mis mixed up their names. Because, again, we're only doing this hypothetically. Now, the third way, and probably the most plausible because we know it's happened in the past, is crashes. We know that there was a crash in Roswell. We know there was a crash in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. We know that there was a crash in Texas. I think it's Odessa in 1899 where the spaceman was actually buried by the local residents in a local marked grave. Don't go to look it up. It's already unmarked and they move the stone for the alien. You can't find him. Which leads me to my last and final point that I was going to ask all of you. Remember when I said, if you ask me, and then I said, no, no, I'm going to ask you. Here comes the I ask you question. Are you ready for the U.S. government to come out within a year or two and totally tell you, hey, this is Fred and Tom. They're from the planet Nibiru. They've been hanging out with us for over 50 years. We've been in contact with them. And this is what they've been helping us with. Would you be willing to accept that? And before you answer that question, I want to show you one last clip from a very, very famous American. One of my favorite favorite, favorite Americans ever, Ronald Reagan. I know the actor. It's weird. Former president, yes. But Ronald Reagan gave a speech at the United Nations, which I think is going to tie this all together in a nice little bow for our package. Let's watch this last clip, and we'll be back to discuss it. Here we go. We often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? So you just heard the man Ronald Reagan former president of the United States talking about how he often wondered how humanity would react and put their differences aside if we were threatened by an outside force not of this world this is the man that instituted the Star Wars program whether it was a bluff at the time or not which I honestly if you ask me I don't think it was a bluff I think that the US military anything that they tell you or show you or you read about on television in print on the internet is probably anywhere between 35 to 50 years obsolete give you a perfect example they are talking about the railgun right now on ships that use kinetic energy to fire projectiles at hypersonic speeds and reduce buildings to rubble without any gunpowder explosions. If they're showing us that, that's obsolete. If they're showing us the F-22, which is a class five jet, an air fighter, 
that's probably obsolete and they're probably working on something even better I mean hell right now the US Air Force has a spaceship that is unmanned that goes into our atmosphere and stays there for years at a time for God knows whatever reason shortly after the US Pentagon announced that they had photographed unidentified flying objects in our airspace and throughout the world and not only after and not only after they announced that they had off-world vehicles within their possession and Donald Trump our current president 2020 vote for Trump announced the making of a new military branch Space Force do you really think this is all a coincidence or do you think that we're all gonna be told that that gray little fucker on the screen right there is coming over to our house to say hello and when he knocks on the door are you gonna open the door and invite them in or are you gonna close the door and say I don't want anything to do with it thank you for taking time to watch my video I hope that you enjoyed what you watched if you did Put a thumbs up down below hit the notification bell if you want to keep up to date with all the videos that i'm posting give me a thumbs up subscribe i think i already mentioned thumbs up but that's okay we can do it two or three more times hit the subscribe the subscription uh, subscription button if you want to be uh, kept up to date with everything that i'm doing i drop videos probably about three or four times a week of different topics different subjects we do gaming video reactions movie reactions and pretty soon we're going to be moving over to patreon the last thing i did want to say to you guys is I gave a special thank you the other day I think it was two days ago that I wanted to do a special video when I hit 50 when I did the thank you video originally where I was gonna do it for 50 subscribers when I woke up that morning I saw that you guys had blown right past that and gone to 77 so that's when I made the video that morning and you hear me say 77 subscribers we have blown well past that as well I am now at 88 subscribers and over I think it's 5,000 views on my channel so keep sharing keep spreading keep interacting with me and i'll interact with you give me ideas on the videos that you want to see and i'll research and look them up as always wherever you are in the world and whatever you're doing right now wherever that may be i hope you have a smile on your face thank you for taking time to watch me and i hope you and everybody you love are having a wonderful day